and Tom, you heard uh, the Prime Minister, in fact, he talked about his mom, who's doing well, uh, but then he also talked about the situation in Fort Mac. Give us the latest uh, in what's happening there. Yeah, so it's been a cool spring here, and the fear was once the weather started to warm up, we'd see a rapid melt and ice jams form, and that's what's happened in Fort McMurray. Uh, pretty bad flooding in that community, the lower part of the community underwater there. 15,000 people have been evacuated. This comes essentially almost exactly four years after the wildfire in that uh, community as well. Uh, a lot of the areas that were hit by that wildfire are now underwater. Uh, the Premier toured the area yesterday and spoke with the mayor up there. We heard that the mayor has asked for military help. Now, that request has to come through the province, so uh, if, if there is a need for the military to come in to help with sandbags and that, the province says it will put forward that request. It has not been done uh, just yet, but uh, a 25 kilometer long ice jam in Fort McMurray in that area, so not sure when the water will recede, but uh, residents there being hit hard by that in the course of this pandemic. So. Obviously, that is raising concerns there as well. I can't even imagine being told to stay in your home and then mm -hmm. having to leave your home. Uh, it must be so difficult for the residents there. And let's talk about what's happening at that uh, meat packing plant. Alberta, we know now, has close to 5,000 cases, and a quarter of those are linked to this plant. Do we know what happened there, and uh, what is the latest out of that situation? Yeah, so the government has received a lot of criticism about that. Uh, workers in that plant had raised concerns about this before the outbreak had really uh, occurred. They say they were working in close conditions. A lot of the people, they carpool, they live in close quarters, and we have seen a huge outbreak. The largest outbreak, as you mentioned, in Canada right now is linked to this meat plant in High River. There's another meat plant in southern Alberta that has a couple hundred cases as well. The opposition here has called for an inquiry into this. The union, the, we've seen a couple of deaths linked to this. The union has called for a fatality inquiry to find out exactly what happened. But the plant is closed. The other one is uh, working on just a single shift. But uh, a lot of concern about that outbreak here. I mean, people say, look, if this had been handled better, we'd have far fewer cases in Alberta. We'd be a lot further along in the fight of this uh, pandemic. Tom, uh, Alberta's chief medical officer of health is, is praising Albertans uh, for keeping the numbers below projections. I know we're, we're mm -hmm. getting the national numbers today, but how, how low are these numbers? How much below? Yeah, so so a few weeks ago when the, the province released its modeling, it figured that at about this time there'd be 400 Albertans in hospital dealing with COVID-19. The number as of yesterday was 87 people. Uh, the number of people confirmed cases in Alberta is 18% below the national average. So the med chief medical officer of health here says, look, we're doing a good job. We are containing this. You know, apart from that meatpacking situation, a lot of the province is doing very well. Now, it, to be clear, the number of cases is still going up. We saw more than 200 new cases yesterday. We saw two more deaths. 75 people have passed away in Alberta, so we're not through it yet, but the Chief Medical Officer of Health says, look, we are bending, or we are at least uh, below where we were expecting to be. Let's keep this up. Uh, we aren't talking about opening the economy here yet. We have not seen what those details look like, but uh, as far as where their modeling was projecting, we are ahead of the game here. Well, that's certainly good news. Uh, let's talk about mm -hmm. the oil sector while I have you. Companies mm -hmm. uh, are going to start releasing their financial results for the first three months of the year. Any expectations there and what do they want from the federal government? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a difficult time here in Alberta. Even before the pandemic hit, we were under a, a, a curtailment program here in Alberta. There simply is not enough pipeline capacity to get the oil produced out of Alberta off to markets. So we were seeing low prices here. We were seeing investment being pulled back. And then the pandemic hit and world oil demand has dropped by upwards of 30 million barrels per day. We saw prices go in the negative. Last week, we saw West Texas Intermediate dip as low as almost $40 per barrel below price. So oil companies here are saying, look, this is going to be a dev devastating year. Uh, there was a report released this morning by Alberta Treasury Branch, a uh, production they put out called The Owl, that says we could see a 14% drop in the number of uh, barrels of oil produced in Alberta this year. That's 176 uh, million barrels fewer than last year. Uh, the companies here have said, look, we need support. We need liquidity. A couple of weeks ago, the federal government did announce some money for a billion dollars for well reclamation. That will keep people working to clean up old wells, orphan wells, wells that aren't in use anymore. But uh, there's a lot of concern about these medium and small businesses not being able to pay the bills, not being able to keep people on staff, and that would just drive them even further into debt and potential bankruptcies. So the numbers, they're not going to be good. It's going to be tough this year, and uh, they're calling for billions more in support of some form from the federal government. All right, Tom Vernon in Edmonton, thanks so much for joining us this morning.